How's it going everyone? It's Kyle and in today's video, which is the first in a series on Python programming, I'm going to teach you how to get started with Python and how to set up Visual Studio Code. So as you just heard, we're starting a whole new series all about the Python programming language. Earlier this year I finished a series on C, and C is a lower level, not at all object oriented programming language. And now we're going to be learning Python, which is pretty much on the opposite end of the spectrum. It's a higher level language, which means in terms of programming, it's closer to the language that we humans speak with each other than it is to the machine code that uh, robots run. As a matter of fact, Python is an interpreted language, whereas C is an example of a compiled language. If you don't know what the difference is, when you write a piece of C code on the computer, the computer, before it loads onto your microcontroller, will change it into machine code and then passes the machine code to the microcontroller. However, with Python uh, or other interpreted languages, the code as it is written on your computer is passed onto the microcontroller and then while the microcontroller is running it's going to uh, interpret the code as it is which is why it's called an interpreter. Uh, because of this Python tends to run a little bit slower than other compiled languages such as C and C is one of the fastest ones out there so it's not really a fair comparison uh, but this allows us to have really cool features like object oriented programming which is another thing that we're going to be learning all about in this series. So as I mentioned before C is not object oriented at all, whereas Python is object oriented. So what exactly does that mean? We'll explore that in detail later, but I'll just give you the very brief 20 second version, is that Python uh, lets you interact with the program using things called objects. So an object can be something like an integer, an array, or as we find out later, you can create your own objects in Python, and they can have their own inherent functions and methods and things like that. So there's so much cool stuff to learn. And um, that's kind of just why, the reason why I chose Python is uh, because Python is so widely used nowadays. And the reason why it's widely used is because it's very convenient, which goes back to its object-oriented nature. And as you'll see, because it's higher level, you can write Python code so much faster than C. The other advantage of Python is it has an extensive uh, range of libraries that have been created for it. So all of those libraries and all of the power uh, that they offer is right at your fingertips and just a few import statements away. And again, we're learning about all of this in later tutorials. In this video, I just want to first give you a brief overview about Python, which I just did. And in the next part, I'm going to be helping you set up Visual Studio Code on your PC. Now, what what is Vis uh, Visual Studio, often abbreviated VS Code? That is the development environment in which we will be writing our Python code. Uh, so, like most programming languages require some kind of development environment, we use Robot C for C. We're going to be using VS Code for Python, although you could also use VS Code for other languages such as C, Java, etc. Really, the sky is the limit, and it's just a fabulous editor with so many different tools. So, with all of that being said, let's jump right in and start with the install. So, I'm going to go right ahead and show you how to install Visual Studio Code on your computer. You see down here, I already have it installed, so it's a little bit redundant, but I'll walk you through all of, the, all of the steps for downloading it and configuring it for use with Python. So first, of course, you want to go to the handy-dandy internet and look for Visual Studio Code, not Microsoft Visual Studio. That would be the fool's errand. We want Visual Studio Code. Click on that. And uh, this is the website that you'll be looking for. Um, if you have a Windows machine, you're in luck. You could just click Download for Windows. Uh, this is just an awesome development environment. Uh, let the exe download itself and then as soon as that's ready you can click on it and then uh, so you just walk through everything uh, accept this agreement no one ever reads this uh, choose the location where it would be installed the default is great uh, all of this is just fantastic um, I don't need a desktop icon and then just let it do its thing uh, this screen will uh, do a whole bunch of stuff and in a few seconds we'll have Visual Studio Code ready for us to uh, configure. So after that we'll click finish and it will launch it for me and this is pretty much what the uh, Visual Studio Code editor looks like. Now you might not necessarily see this on startup this is because mine was already configured for Python remember I already had this installed on my computer yours if you're doing a fresh download won't be configured so to do that you go over to the left over here where you uh, see extensions or control shift X and you're going to want to download the Python extension of course you do that by typing Python in the search bar up here 
and um, you just click on that uh, download it and install it and then you're ready to start cooking with fire and programming in Python while we're here I want to show you a few important things to know about Visual Studio Code that will get you started with making your own Python programs this is the screen you're most likely to see if you don't have any current projects uh, or if you do have current projects it will just go right ahead and show you those but if you want to start a new project you simply need to hit control N and it will open up a blank new page for you now it's important to note that this is not a Python file as you can see if I make a variable here it doesn't recognize the 5 as an integer object because this isn't Python this is just a plain text file in order to create a Python file what you need to do is immediately after you've opened your new uh, project by hitting control N go to file save as and down here in the save as type you're going to want to choose Python and give it some kind of fun name and then when you save it then it recognizes it uh, as a integer object because we've told it it's a Python file and it will follow all of the conventions of Python so it'll catch errors for you and it'll autocorrect and it'll even run your programs so that is just really fantastic and let's say you've started writing a program already and you want to run your program to test it what you can do is you'll hit the F5 key which will bring up this little menu in the debugger and then if you hit enter a second time what it'll do is it'll run your code and do whatever it is you've programmed your computer to do this down here which is the terminal will open up you can see it has like the directory where uh, the application the program stuff all that nonsense you can ignore all of this stuff in blue and then here are the actual outputs of the program from my print statements and you can run this program as many times as you like by clicking clicking F5 and that is all great and dandy so that's you can write programs and then F5 will run them for you and if you want to clear them out you could just hit this little trash can right here and it just gets rid of it there's a few other awesome things that I want to show you about this editor which you will find helpful when you're programming the first is that uh, this has autocomplete which if you're lazy like me is the greatest thing since sliced bread so anytime you start typing in a command that Python should recognize for example print it'll come up in a suggestion box and then all you have to do is click enter and it will complete it for you this even works with things like variables that you have declared so you see I have two variables uh, called list1 and list2 and as I start typing list it knows to suggest those two variables so I could choose either one of them and click enter and it will completely fill in the rest of the variable name this is just really awesome not just because it saves time but also because it helps you be consistent with your typing and it avoid helps you to avoid making uh, typographical errors now another really cool thing is let's say you do make a typo and you misspell something let's say I, I drop the I in list and I go to run my program um, if we give this a few seconds eventually it'll show like a red squiggly line underneath it to tell me that there's an error but if I go to run what it also do is it will yell at me and show this big lovely red error and it will tell me what kind of exception has occurred or what kind of error and in this case we have a name error because I have no such variable called LST2 which means that I misspelled a variable when I meant to name it something else and uh, that's just really awesome because that will help you catch errors and stuff and I know I, I rely on that all the time uh, to catch all kinds of typos that I make while I'm programming and then uh, another really cool thing that you can use is you can use control F to find different things within your code so let's say I want to see uh, every time I type the number 35 in my program because I want to change it to say the number 36 you just type in 35 into the control F bar and it highlights everywhere that this is used in the the program and you can also use this to replace all instances of where 35 is written this is a very powerful tool to use as well too for things like debugging and even just general programming it's great the last thing you'll notice is that you'll see I have my editor in the classic default dark mode and the reason why I do this is because when I'm working on programming projects at 3 a.m. the dark mode just has a habit of uh, not melting my eyeballs out of their sockets which is just fabulous I love it but if you wanted to change this you of course have the option to go to any number of different color themes dark modes light modes in between modes uh, which again just speaks to the flexibility of this editor I want to finish this tutorial by giving you some general information that relates to Python programming 
So as you can see, Python is a text-based language, which means you literally type in text to make your programs. And like most text-based programming languages, uh, white space doesn't really matter. White space being uh, these spaces where there is no code written. So for example, line 7 is an ex example of white space because nothing's written here. Or also between the nums and the equal sign, there's some white space. And in Python, white space doesn't matter in most cases, but there are some cases where it does, and I want to show you some of those cases. So for example, uh, I have one space in between nums and this equal sign. I can make as many spaces as I want, and it won't affect how the, the program is run. And I can even have no spaces, and this is an instance where you can have like no space at all. Although it's better practice to put a space there, just because it looks better and it's easier to read. However, if I was to delete uh, the, for example, this, the white space between this definition keyword and the name of my function, you can see that it changes color uh, because it has changed into something else. Now this is something that Python no longer recognizes. So this is an instance where the white space is crucial. You must have at least one space, but then after that the number of spaces you have doesn't really matter. The other instance where white space is important is in indentations. Now unlike some other languages like C that we looked at before, Python is actually indentation sensitive. And you can see this is the definition of a function here, which we will learn all about in a later tutorial. But right now, uh, what you need to know is that there are no brackets that contain the body of the function. So in C, you would have like a curly Q bracket uh, to start it, and then a curly Q bracket down here to end the body of the function. But in Python, there is no such thing, because instead we use a colon and then indentation to indicate where the body of the function starts. So everything on this indentation level underneath this function will be included here. So that's all the code that I write here and so on and so forth. And then if I want to write something that's no longer included in the function, I would hit backspace and I would go back onto one indentation level to the left. So that's something that's very important. Because if I were to, let's say, remove this indentation and I were to try to run the program, it would completely crash. Uh, see, it says there's an indentation error. It's smart enough to know what goes wrong and tells you exactly what happened. Um, so always be careful with your indentations. And the standard Python indentation is four spaces, uh, which just uh, is taken care of by the tab key. So if you hit tab once, uh, it'll just make a, a standard four space indentation. And thankfully, when you're writing a function or an if statement or whatever, anything that requires indentation, the editor is actually smart enough to um, it, it is smart enough to know that it should indent for you. So if I had some if statement, right? Uh, and I hit enter, it automatically indents those four spaces. And you can, of course, uh, nest some things. So if I had uh, multiple control structures within each other, it would keep with the indentation. And that's how you indicate uh, which, which body belongs to which control structure. So for example, uh, this code belongs to the while loop. While if I go back down here, this is outside of the while loop now, and it belongs to this if statement. So it's, it's just an exercise in wrapping your head around uh, using the indentations correctly and what they might mean. And that's what Python's all about. One last important bit about Python syntax is that if you notice from this code here, you never need to punctuate your lines of code with semicolons. As you can see, this line where I'm removing from a set, there's no semicolon after it. Same with this one. As a matter of fact, there's no punctuation at all on the end of most lines. And that goes back to the whole white space kind of matters thing because Python knows that you've written a line of code when you've moved on to the next line. And uh, you can see up here defining a set, there's no punctuation. Even this, which technically all belongs to one line of code, but I've split it up over three different lines, doesn't need any kind of punctuation to indicate that it all belongs together, which I always found really interesting. The only time you do need a piece of punctuation at the end of a line is in the case where you're defining a function or defining a control loop, in which case you would punctuate it with a regular colon and not a semicolon. As a matter of fact, I can't even think of a single uh, thing off the top of my head in Python that would require a semicolon. And when you type a semicolon, it comes up in this scary looking red color. So I, I really, as far as I know, it's not really even used at all. But that's just uh, something to keep in mind is that you don't need to punctuate the lines 
in Python. As a matter of fact, it's wrong if you try to do so. It'll end up yelling at you. Thank you for watching my tutorial this week. If you haven't already, be sure to check out my book. It's called Building Smart Lego Mindstorms EV3 Robots, and it's now available on Amazon. If you found this tutorial helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel to get more tutorials like this every Thursday. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, leave it in the comments section below. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.